Hey, this is Dr. Al. So today we're talking about pacemaker versus defibrillator. Um, there's a huge difference between these two things. I'll tell you what they do first and then we'll get into some details. So first of all, a pacemaker is a much smaller device. As you can tell, uh, this is much larger, much thicker. Um, the dimensions are much, much different. A pacemaker, all it does is detect beat to beat if you are set if you are not giving yourself enough beats, if it's set to a minimum of 60 and the interval between two of your beats is going to be slower than that, it'll give you an extra beat on time to make it so that you at least beat 60 uh, beats per minute. Now, the other thing that it can do very, very well is um, it can speed up if you need to speed up. Um, they almost all have an accelerometer in them, and if you... Are exerting yourself or moving faster or doing any kind of activity you'll get more beats so well, that's one really good thing about uh, pacemakers they, they can be set more aggressively if you start walking they can give you a lot of beats or if you start walking they can give you just a little bit more if you're really exerting yourself and you're really moving around then they can give you uh, much more beats so that's that now defibrillators are much larger um, as you can see um, defibrillators have the added function where they have a much larger battery and capacitors so that they can actually shock you. If you were to go into a deadly rhythm, uh, we can set something called anti-tachycardia pacing, which is ATP. Basically, if you start going into VTAC at 150 beats per minute, it'll pace you at 180 or 200, it'll go t -t 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 and then let go and see if you get out of the rhythm. Um, if you don't, it'll try again, it'll try again, and then, and then as it's trying this, the, the battery or the capacitor is charging up to deliver a shock. Now, if you get out of the rhythm, then it stops and it doesn't need to shock you. If you don't get out of the rhythm, it will deliver a shock and it'll continue to do this until you get out of the rhythm or get back into rhythm. Um, we can set this in different ways. We can tell it not to do ATP. A lot of times, uh, if we know somebody has a lot of VTAC, uh, we set it not to do ATP. Now, the one thing I will warn you, um, pacemakers and defibrillators cannot see if you are actually in VTAC or sinus tac because the wires are actually inside your heart all the way down. They can't tell if the QRS is narrow, which is normal, or really wide like VTAC. It's not a surface EKG. A surface EKG can tell the difference. Um, defibrillators can't. If we set it to 150 and you're on a treadmill and your heart rate is over 150, it's going to think it needs to shock you. Um, so just make sure you know that at whatever rate we put you at. Now normally we set it to 181 uh, or, or higher. Um, we tell 181 is the VTAC rate. Sometimes we set it to 200 or 222 as the VFib rate. So just make sure you know your settings and that's kind of it folks. Um, smaller can pace you, smaller can do everything that a pacemaker does. I'm sorry, larger can do everything that a pacemaker does but can also shock you or anti-tachycardia pace you uh, if needed. Some of these defibrillators can also detect volume levels if you put on fluid the impedance between the lead and the can, we call this the can, the impedance between the lead and the can uh, goes up and then we know you're putting on volume. We can call you and say, hey, you know, it looks like you've you've gained weight, you put on water fluid, increase your Lasix, increase your water pills and get that fluid off. It's good for people with CHF. Um, so that's about it. That's kind of the difference between the two.